Last summer, I was at Emerald Isle relaxing, walking the beach, reading books, doing some puzzles. And one fine morning, I was filling out the crossword puzzle, 13 across, six letters, made a vintage phone call. Well, I thought about Alexander Graham Bell, and I tried to visualize that first phone call, but I couldn't figure out what that could be. I thought of the old children's invention, two cans and a string, and that wasn't going to fit. So I tried to figure out the down words to give me a few clues. I can't begin to tell you how upset I was to realize the answer. Dialed. Really? Vintage? <laughs> the next morning I turned on the Today Show, which was celebrating the 25th anniversary of the first airing of a popular TV show. Hmm, what could that be, I thought. Lucy was a little older than that. Well, it was the first airing of Seinfeld. <laughs> Later, when I stopped at my favorite shop for ice cream and what appeared to be a 12-year-old server, I <laughs> announced quite gleefully and with absolutely no prodding from me that he had already applied my senior discount. <laughs> But it was a beach, and okay, youth is all around us there. But alas, Emerald Isle does not seem to be the only place that's trafficking in youthisms. I recently found myself talking to the clothing sales clerks, describing at my articulate best the look I'm after. Professional, but not matronly. When that gets blank stares, I try explaining the balance in equal measure by professional and dignified for a person of my age. I finally dumb it down to not too short, not too low cut, and not too youthful. <laughs> of course, most of the sales clerks are about 22, and they look at me mystified by what not too youthful might mean or why anybody would intentionally seek it out and be willing to pay for it. Now, like most of you, I am not old. Well, at least I don't feel old. But in my reflections, perhaps brought on by thoughts of this reunion weekend and our upcoming 125th anniversary here at Meredith, I've started to think a bit more about age, wisdom, experience, and the strengths they give us. And my first realization is that there is power in lasting. I think of stores that have gone away since my college days here in Raleigh, Tallheimer's, Ivy's, Miller and Rhodes to the Tyler House. I remember the music we thought would never die, the Beatles, Fleetwood Mac, Queen, Barry Manilow. <laughs> Just this past year, Raleigh lost Sadlacks, a primary contributor to my freshman 15, and probably a few more in here too. Just yesterday, IHOP announced that its classic Hillsboro location will move. Yeah. You may think Starbucks will be here forever. I don't know. This week, we lost blues legend B.B. King. And next week, David Letterman airs his final show. Schools change too. What was once Atlantic Christian College is now Barton. East Carolina Teachers College and before that East Carolina Normal School is now East Carolina University. Peace went co-ed and became William Peace University. And Sweetbriar, mercy. All to say, time changes things, even the things we believe are unchangeable. While we're always open to change, a big realization is that we must be absolutely clear about what should and should not change in our own lives and at Meredith College. With that sense of history and change, and as we're completing our 124th year and heading into our 125th year, I'm excited about the momentum we're building. Excited about our 125th anniversary coming this February. I cannot help but attribute our longevity to a reputation for excellence, to an inspirational campus setting beautifully designed and maintained, to top faculty and staff who understand our limited resources and make miracles happen anyway, 
to a community spirit that touches all the work we do, and to outstanding alumni whose loyal and passion for this place marks us as exceptional. In short, Meredith has built on its strengths and can claim great success in its 124-year history. For now, let's focus on recent success as we acknowledge the State of the College 2015. And today's theme, the message, is undeniable. We are going strong. Yes. How have we done it? A lot of people want to know. Let me see if you remember this exchange from Alice in Wonderland between Alice and the Cheshire Cat. When Alice asked, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? The Cheshire Cat responds, that depends a good deal on where you want to go. I don't much care where, Alice said. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. The lesson of the Cheshire Cat is an important one for Meredith College because the value of planning is a very important factor in what's happening here. Our strategic plan called Meredith Forever has helped us come together and shape a vision for this college. Let me share some critical accomplishments grounded in those plans that are setting us in good stead. First, our academic programs are strong. But key to declarations of strength, of course, is evidence. The excellence of our music programs has been reaffirmed by the National Association of Schools of Music, and our interior design program has been reaffirmed by the Council for Interior Design Accreditation. Our School of Business is accredited by the Global Gold Standard, AACSB, and it has been reaccredited just this year. You might know, by the way, that Meredith is one of only two women's colleges in the world that has an AACSB accredited School of Business. This year, our education programs will be reviewed for reaccreditation, and the whole college's reaccreditation will be reviewed in early spring. We are not worried. <laughs> Perhaps the most exciting accomplishment in terms of student offerings, learning, and development is the creation and rollout of Strong Points. Strong Points is a four-part advising and coaching model that emphasizes what Meredith has always done best, teach women to build on their strengths to achieve their goals. You are our finest evidence. Meredith's creation of Strong Points starts with a research-based understanding that women all too often fixate on their weaknesses. I'm not good at math. My nose is crooked. My hips are too big. Meredith flips that message by having students identify their strengths, what's right about them, and then putting that understanding to work as they build an academic plan for majors and coursework, an experiential plan to incorporate study abroad, internships, undergraduate research, or service learning, club participation, and athletics into their Meredith experience. It next offers financial lessons to help students build a financial plan that addresses basic budgeting, protecting their credit rating, and minimizing their debt. Just as important, it teaches them how to negotiate for a salary, compare benefits packages, and plan for retirement. Finally, we take the academic, experiential, and financial elements of the plan and weave in career planning. Learning the pathways to rewarding and well-paying careers is a powerful means of exploring life's, life's possibilities and making the college experience more relevant. Strong Points is a proprietary program only at Meredith College that builds on the 40 plus years of research that have gone into the development and refinement of an assessment from which we talk with students from day one about what is right about them. Make no mistake, there are and will always be opportunities for educators to help students understand and improve their weaknesses. But as an introduction to college, especially for young women who tend to hyper-focus on their weaknesses, beginning with strengths is a critical flipping of the internal monologue that so many women hear. A monologue that says, I can't, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough. I'm particularly excited about Strong Points not only for what it does for our students, because it puts into action the kind of lip service often given to empowering women, which is puzzling. 
Now it becomes clear what it means, though, at least at Meredith College. It means helping students explore and make intentional choices about what they will study, what they will do outside the classroom, how they will manage their finances to build the lives they want, and how they will put their knowledge and strengths to work in a career or in their homes and communities. In short, how they will claim their strengths and their power to build the best life possible. The excitement about Strong Points is definitely catching on. Our admissions staff reports great enthusiasm from students and their families about this program and how it distinguishes a Meredith education. So let's talk about enrollment. We began each budgeting cycle with projections of incoming student populations. Our plan and our budget for the year we're just concluding called for the admission of 430 new full-time, first-time freshmen. 430. Well, we enrolled 470 students, our second largest class in Meredith's history. And the profile of this year's freshman class is strong. What about the incoming class? Well, this was the class of 2014, and we were afraid that the 470 number was some kind of aberration, a rather inexplicable swing that could not be sustained. So based on the advice of the expert consultants we use, we have budgeted and projected an enrollment in August of 418 new students. Our latest calculations, however, show we are much more likely to have a class of 450 students. How exciting. What is going on? Well, clearly more women are excited about Meredith College, and already we're seeing more high school juniors and seniors set to come in the summer months to check us out. A new emphasis for this year is the reinvigoration of the adult or non-traditional age program. Based on surveys and enthusiastic attendance at a reunion last summer, Meredith has been reminded of its historical strength in re-engaging women who, for whatever reason, have postponed or been out of college for some period of time. Renamed Wings, the program is attracting strong women who want to be even stronger. As we work to rebuild this program, we have an exceptional opportunity to extend our focus on strengths to this population of women who may have already found their strengths but want to apply them in new ways. While we're certainly going strong with academics and enrollment, Meredith is also making its mark in other ways. This year, for instance, we won the USA South athletic title for our newest sport, lacrosse. In only our third year, We've already won this title twice. <laughs> we played twice in the NCAA championship. <laughs> Even better, though, is that Meredith earned the USA South Women's President's Cup for overall excellence and number of wins across all sports. <laughs> I hope you know that is indeed a big deal because the rumor out there is that single gender institutions can't win this. They're not competitive enough. <laughs> of course, none of that happens without the right financing and facilities, and we have some wonderful bricks and mortar projects that have been recently completed. We've just replaced Windows and Jones and Wainwright, giving a much needed facelift to this building. We've renovated space for a new strengths lab where students, faculty, and staff can come to explore more deeply what their strengths may mean and how they might use them in their studies or in their work or in the community. We've also completed the refurbishing of upstairs Kate Center. We've renovated Belt Dining, which I hope you enjoyed last night. We added the outdoor patio so your heels wouldn't sink when you're dancing. And we renovated Lower Belt's meeting rooms. We've completed a one million dollar IT recabling project to shore up our infrastructure security and reliability. And we've added an IT tool called MapWorks that allows faculty and staff to compare notes about students who may be in trouble. 
Lest you think all of this is sexy, we've replaced air conditioning systems, chillers, the man flow chilled water project, bathrooms in Johnson Hall, and now we're on to roofs. Yes, and we're getting to those stairwells too. Okay. Now, let me talk about the college's financial picture. We're continuing to work to strengthen our financial position and recover from the economic downturn of 2008 and 2009. With your help, we will be able to sustain our future. Most notable, we've made some important financial decisions that have helped to ensure that we're financially sustainable and can protect what is distinctly Meredith, our single gender status. For us, the college has had to make some important cuts, but we're practicing budget efficiency and we're budgeting more conservatively. The second way we're enhancing our financial stability is through the quiet phase of the comprehensive campaign you've been hearing about, designed to address the most critical needs of the campus. For now, here are a few highlights of our financial strengths to date. First, in our last fiscal year, just closed, we enjoyed our greatest fundraising year ever, with over $18 million counted towards the campaign. Of course, the majority of this money is in planned or estate giving, meaning the money is not in hand, but signed wills and documentation of intent are in hand. In fact, just three years ago, we had about $29 million in planned gifts. Today, we have over $41 million in planned gifts. That bit of uh, good financial news continues because our endowment has grown to an all-time high of $94 million. We're chasing that hundred, let me tell you. As positive as these numbers are, I'm most proud that we're truly making strides in enhancing the culture of philanthropy at Meredith. Our employees are a key piece of this culture, with employee giving rate at a phenomenal 60%. Nationally, the percentage of employees who give to their own institution is a mere 26%. You have done a remarkable job yourselves, but of course what we need is more alumni giving. I won't fuss because you're the one most loyal supporters and I know how much you love this college. But I know that you have a lot of friends and classmates who also love this college and they value its single gender status, they value what it has meant in their lives, and they value what it does for the future of women. So it's a bit surprising that overall only 17% of our alumni have donated to the college this year. Let me put that in perspective for you. At Sweetbriar, 42% of their alumni contributed. So, it's a hard message, but I'm asking you to consider doubling your gift this year, or adding another zero or two. Consider a planned gift for your estate, and consider an unrestricted gift that goes to the most pressing needs of the college. You know, those roofs and chillers and air conditioners, those things that aren't very exciting until they break. There's more you can do as well. Wear your ring. If you've lost it, we can help you get another one. Bring a young woman to campus. Do you know that 85% of the young women who come to Meredith apply to Meredith? This moment, I thank my sister on the front row and my mother on the front row for bringing me to Meredith when I was bit of a whippersnapper who was definitely not going to a women's college. <laughs> Thank you. Talk to your friends who may be interested in pursuing a first or a second degree. Did you know that you can come back to Meredith now and just pursue a major if you have your undergraduate degree already? You don't have to do the gen ed stuff again. So if you're interested in changing careers, you might think about that. Linda did a great job, um, but it's a great opportunity for you to learn more about the Meredith Travels program through the alumni office. In two weeks, I'll be heading to Ireland with a group of Meredith friends and my mother. In September, I'll be going to San Sepulcro with Meredith Travels with my sister. Uh, San Sepulcro Cross is the site for Meredith's Palazzo for study abroad and friends of the college and the Tuscan intensives you've already heard about. We're hoping to offer at least one international and one domestic trip each year. Get on our mailing list because nobody travels like Meredith. 
follow us and retweet, repost, or just forward good news about Meredith. Your engagement with us means the world and further accentuates our message that Meredith is going strong. So what's the source of all this energy and all this good news? No doubt the Going Strong brand campaign has had a profound impact on recognition of and enthusiasm for Meredith College. In addition, the new website, Meredith EDU, has increased site visitors by 67%, and that's for unique visits, not repeats. Our social media fan base has increased by 29% through postings on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and other outlets. Of course, what's best about Going Strong and what's most emblematic of what we're about is improving the quality of life for all. Through a focus on health and well-being, through salary and compensation equity, and through the indomitable Meredith spirit. As Meredith stands as an asset to this region, state, nation, and world, we recognize quality of life as the critical answer to why we do what we do. We make strong women stronger, and we do so because it's what Meredith has always done. Last summer, I traveled with 30 college friends, alumni, donors, trustees, retired faculty and staff through England and Scotland as part of our Meredith Travel Series. Although I've been to London many times, it was my first true adventure into the countryside as we went to York, the Holy Island, Lindisfarne, the Lake District, Bath, Windsor, and other sites in between. As a Meredith College English major, of course, I was particularly taken by the cottages of William Wordsworth and the Bronte sisters. The moors of Wuthering Heights were never more realistic than when I stood in the cemetery on the bluff at the Holy Island of Lindisfarne on an overcast day and heard the winds howling below. I thought of the faculty I had at Meredith, who taught me to appreciate the poetry and the stories, the characters and the settings and the landscape, the villages, and the people. I said a silent thank you to Norma Rose, I own Knight, Betty Webb, Susan Gilbert, and other faculty for helping me connect my travels to the readings and the history and the everness of those works. And then I realized that when I had her as a teacher, I own Knight was exactly my age. No, I do not feel old. What I feel is perspective. And I feel gratitude for the opportunities and the legacy of excellence that were and continue to be Meredith College. Today, I feel gratitude for your efforts to ensure that Meredith's quality and stability and longevity not only define us today or next year in our 125th year, but always. Because the next generation of Meredith women is waiting in the wings. And the one on the far left there is my goddaughter. Generation after generation, Meredith College is making a difference. We're making history. And we, like our alumni, are going strong. Thank you. <laughs>